Yes. Just what we needed. Let's pray that it's not uh, too drastic. Let's pray. All right, everyone, we are live, so I will go ahead and get us started. My name is Noelle, and I will be helping to moderate tonight's Let's Talk program. We love hearing from you around the world, so please use the sidebar chat in Zoom or the comments on Facebook or YouTube to share where you're joining from. We ask that you invite others to join my OCN community. We are a welcoming community available any day, anytime, anywhere, and membership is always free. A few reminders to please be respectful and polite with the opinions of others as we have our conversation today. Please remain muted when you aren't speaking, but feel free to share all of your questions and comments in the chat. Um, we will have Q&A later. We want this to be an interactive conversation. We have uh, both Father Savros and some guests from OCMC, so feel free to ask any of them questions as we go through our broadcast. As I said, you can put those questions in the chat, raise your hand, or send them to me directly. And if you're joining us on social media, you can post your questions and comments there as well. This is a live program. It's being shared on our MyOCN Facebook and YouTube channels. And we are also recording it, so it will be available on the website after the show. The Orthodox Christian Network is a 501c3 corporation and a 100% donor-supported ministry. We just had Giving Tuesday this past week, and we appreciate everyone that came out to support us. And we encourage the rest of you, if you're able, at the end of this year, to make a financial contribution to OCN. We do rely on donations to keep all of these programs, courses, streaming broadcasts, and all the other resources free, and we appreciate you very much. You can find all of our upcoming community events directly on the website, and you can upload them to your Google Calendar. We'll have some special broadcasts coming up for the holidays, which we'll mention at the end. But um, of course, those of you who have signed up for my OCN community will receive those updates in your email inbox as well. So without further ado, I will turn things over to Father Chris to get our program started. Thank you, Noel. Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. Good early morning to those of you who are joining us in Europe. Uh, we thank you very much for being with us. We have a very special program, as I mentioned before, uh, with two guests from Albania and one from southwestern Florida. Uh, it's great to be back with you. I hope you all enjoyed a wonderful and a blessed Thanksgiving. It's always a great time of the year. Uh, we'll start with prayer. And as you know, I have my votive candle that I light every time we have these meetings. I have a new one now being out here in San Jose, California. I got a new candle, thank God. So we'll begin with prayer. Heavenly King, comforter, the spirit of truth, everywhere present, filling all things, treasure of blessings and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us of every stain and save our souls, O oh, good one. Amen. Amen. Well, we are going now to Albania, live to Albania, to speak to two individuals. One is a missionary, one is a priest, and he is running the only Orthodox Christian radio program in the country of Albania. Father Vigori Pelashi and Theofani Saryanis. Let me begin by giving us a little or, uh, intro, if you will, to Theofani, whom I had the privilege of meeting when I was the president of Helena College and Holy Cross. Listen to her incredible background. She is the daughter of iconographer and archon Elias and Angela Vyamianakis. She grew up in Newport, Ritchie, Florida, not too far from you, Father. Her family, and in particular her great-grandfather, rather her grandfather, Nikitas Damianakis, was centrally involved in planting Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene Church in Palm Harbor. At a young age, he impressed upon her the type of faith and dedication required to grow a church from nothing. The memory of her late Papu, the spirit of these three miraculous saints, and her family's guidance helped her make the decision to attend college in Boston. She entered Hellenic College in 2012. Her keen interest in religious freedoms at the Ecumenical Patriarchate led her to developing interest in Orthodox mission work. As a student, Theofani quickly became involved in campus missions committee, explored a vocation missions while making several short trips. This was affirmed on her first trip to Kenya in 2014. Later in 2016, she graduated from Atlanta College with a BA in religious studies. She is active in parish life, primarily with youth ministry, Sunday school, and seniors. She is married to Steve, who was also a graduate of Atlanta College, rather of Holy Cross, and a missionary in Albania with her. He's a 2015 graduate of Holy Cross. Now that's a long intro, but I did that purposely so you'd get to know who 
Theophany is. I don't have such a long intro for Father Gregor, but you'll see why I left a little extra time because I want him to speak. Theophany, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's great to see you again. Can you briefly describe the work that you and Steve do in Tirana as the OCMC missionary? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's also good to see you again. So Steve and I got here in April, right before Pascha, so right before Easter. And the Archbishop, Archbishop Anastasios, uh, directed us to Father Grigori to work with him uh, with the youth office, which we would know in America as the young adult office and with me as well to help him with the radio station. And then on top of that, we were also asked to teach English. So um, end of the summer came, the Archbishop asked if we would like to teach English. We said, sure. And so Steve and I also teach English to, um, I teach fifth grade English and I do a fifth grade catechism class. And Celian does second grade English and a sixth grade class and that is kind of our overall general okay. world in Albania. All right. And as a newest missionary couple there in Albania, what's, uh, give us one lesson that you've already learned about working as a missionary. So I would say one of the biggest ones is to just be flexible. Uh, I, I think the American condition is that we're very prone to having a schedule and having things down, especially as a woman, I'm very detail oriented. And so having a schedule is something that, you know, I think we as Americans like to hold on to. Oh, it's not on the schedule, we're not gonna do it. And in Albania, you know, it's a little bit more loose. It's a little bit more bulking. So I've never taught English before. You need me to teach English, great. Uh, so it's, it's something just being flexible, allowing God's work to be done and just realizing it's not about you, it's about the greater picture and allowing that part to fill you because once you empty yourself and you say, you know what, I'm just gonna let it go and let God, as we say, then that's when the Holy Spirit can finally start to work and the ministry can actually begin. Well, I've only known you and Steve for a very short time, uh, but it's clear to me and it always was from the moment I met you and your husband uh, that you both have a heart for Christ. And when you have that heart for Christ, you're able to open up and be flexible and look at the new opportunities that can come along. So it's great to see you and talk with you again. Thank you, Father. Father Grigori, good to see you, even though you have <laughs> so many different responsibilities in the Archdiocese <laughs> of Albania. Can you tell our listeners a few facts about Radio Injala? Uh, thank you so much, Father, for uh, inviting us today in this, uh, in this Zoom meeting. In fact, it has been a great blessing for me to be in charge of the Radio Njalia, Resurrection Radio of the Orthodox Autocephalous Church of Albania. It's uh, this uh, uh, radio is one of the first uh, religious radio in Albania. Uh, it was opened uh, with the blessing of the Archbishop Anastasios in 1998. And uh, the next radio was opened to the religious radio of the Muslim community was opened uh, in 2002, four years after the Radio Njalia started uh, uh, its activity. Uh, in 2018, when I uh, was in, when I went in charge of the radio station from the Archbishop, uh, we got the license for the first time uh, to transmit to, to be the religious radio because we transmit in the frequencies of the so of the uh, the country mm -hmm. and uh, now uh, before we transmitted only in one third of uh, albania especially the main cities of albania in tirana and durus but uh, now from 2018 from the status that we won from the government we trans we have the right to transmit in 70 percent of the territory of albania so it wow. is a we cover a lot of nearly uh, two thirds of the of the territory of Albania. Since yeah. now, we have we have invested in uh, four antennas, which cover only fifty percent, and we hope by uh, God blessing will uh, also will uh, have the possibility to have another antenna, so to cover all the area that uh, we have got the permission. That's great. Radio Injalia, it's a very famous uh, radio in uh, in in. 
Tirana especially in the capital, but also now it is opened in the fourth, four metropolis, so it has become very famous in all the metropolis. And it's the official uh, voice of the Orthodox Autocephalous Church of Albania. And uh, serving there, it has been for me uh, one of the best uh, blessings, uh, the biggest you, blessing that I have ever <laughs> had let me, before. Let me, uh, let me ask you, uh, we don't have a lot of time, but I want to jump yeah, in Father. a couple. First of all, you should know that OCN, uh, which is a worldwide internet radio ministry covering programs every single day, along with Pemptusia out of Mount Athos and Mount uh, Vatupedi, that we're here to help you and to help you and to come on your program and do whatever we can. Uh, we know what it is to start a radio program. We started it 27 <laughs> years ago and we started with maybe 25 listeners. And now we're reaching close to a million a month. So oh, we're, here, we're here to serve and to help you. Uh, let me ask Thank you so much, you, Father. Let, let me ask you, why is the uh, OCMC missionary, why is it important that they continue to help you in Albania from the priest standpoint? Uh, you know that uh, the Orthodox Autocephalous Church of Albania was re res resurrected from uh, uh, the most famous missionary men uh, during the 20th century and now in the 21st of century, who is uh, Archbishop Anastasios. Yes. So I might say that the Orthodox Autocephalous Church of Albania is a missionary church. And so... Uh, we uh, we need you know uh, the experience. We need the the faith uh, of our missionaries and uh, telling the truth. Now that we are working together with Stylianos and Theophany, and uh, also with Father uh, Stefanos and uh, also Presbytera Alexandra. Yes, yes. So uh, we feel so happy about them and their contribution is very. Uh, it has been very useful for the church and. Uh, uh, with the youth, we uh, and, and uh, the youth now that uh, they are working, both Stiliano and the Theophany. Let's come over here. It says the speaker's not working. A lot of... That's okay. Someone needs to mute their, uh, their microphone. <laughs> Go ahead. So, uh, Theophany and Stilianos has been a great blessing for us now with the youth, and uh, you know, the, the youth love them so much. They are uh, having two responsibilities with the uh, youth office and with uh, the youth activities. They are leading the Bible study, which is very interesting. And, and uh, I think that uh, it is the first time that, that we have this experience. And also uh, on Sunday meetings uh, after the, the liturgy, we gather all with the youth. And so uh, Theophany and Silianos are also learning the youth about the, and explaining the Ten Commandments of God, which uh, Moses gave to them. So uh, many, I think that huh? many, many the Orthodox Church uh, has had uh, not so many missionaries. And uh, always when we discuss with each other, it's not like the Muslim community or uh, Catholic community, which they have hundreds of missionaries uh, coming to, to Albania for them to help their ministry. And I am one of them who believe that we need uh, missionaries, not uh, uh, just Stilianos and Theophany and the Father uh, Stefanos and Alexander, but we need uh, more and more missionaries to come because here it's a territory where uh, more than 70% of the population uh, are, have, haven't heard yet about the, the, the message of Christ. So it's very important that we need uh, the experience, we need the, the love for Christ, and we need uh, this to, to, to bring here in, uh, in our country. Father, I want to thank you, and I want to thank Theofani uh, for coming on in these first few minutes of our program. Uh, you know you have our prayers and our support. I'm very, very Thank you so much, Father. That, uh, his Eminence, or his Beatitude, rather, <laughs> has allowed this radio ministry to begin because people coming to church, uh, you know, once a week, maybe on a divine liturgy, yeah. uh, certainly is not enough. And we use the modern forms of technology, as we do here yes. in America now, too, to reach them. So thank you very much. I have to move on. Thank you so much, Father. Father. Okay, you're welcome. Your blessing, your blessing Father. Father. The Lord's blessings. <laughs> Father Stavros, welcome back. Thank you, Father. Wonderful to be with you all. Well, you know, we are called to follow <coughs> Jesus Christ, and you've been telling me that for years, and now you have a fantastic book that we're going to talk about, but I want to give you a little bit of an intro to it. Um, you've said that the past two years has displaced a lot of us from our regular life, 
and our regular way of doing things. There were times when we were not allowed to worship. Some have come back with joy, some with hesitancy, and as you know, some haven't come back at all. It is safe to say that it's a good time for us to get back to the basics. The series, as we know, is entitled, We Are Called to Follow Jesus Christ. Father, I have so many questions for you, but we got to get right out of it. We got to start. Um, if prayer is among the most basic things that a Christian does, why is this something so difficult for us? Something that some of us, we're just not used to doing on a regular basis. You know, the simple answer to that is that it's something most of us didn't learn. We didn't do it. Um, it was like we were afraid to do it. I, I'm 49 years old. I don't know. I'm probably like in the middle of the demographics. Um, in our house growing up, we made our cross before meals. We did that faithfully. Um, I can't say we ever prayed except on Thanksgiving. We would, we would pray the Lord's Prayer, almost like we're, who's going to draw the short straw to lead the Lord's Prayer. I remember singing if you saw some nasty during the Paschal season. Some some nights we would sing the slow version, and most nights we would sing the fast one. Um, I remember my dad, a blessed memory, when he would wake up in the morning, he would make his cross before he got out of bed. Um, and so I, I picked that up from him. Uh, and I remember him lighting a candela in front of his icon corner, and he would pray quietly there. He never really said, hey, come over here. Let me show you how to do this. Um so I, I had a little bit of a model with my dad doing that, but not really any kind of direction. Um, I don't remember a lot of sermons on prayer. Uh, you know, there were many sermons on the gospel lesson, but we never had a priest just like sit down and say, here's how to do it. Um, so I think that most of us have trouble with this because we just never really had it modeled for us. And we were never just sat down and taught the basics. Okay. Well, I think we probably should have asked this earlier, but what is prayer? How do we define prayer? You know, in thinking about that question, um, the Greek word for prayer is prosephi. And when you break those words down, pros means toward, and he means a blessing. So prayer means toward a blessing from God. So most of us have had the experience of being in church when a hierarch is celebrating the liturgy. And when there's a hierarch and many priests, before almost every line of the liturgy, the, 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 the hierarch will designate which priest is going to say the next line, and the priest will bow, and the, and the, the hierarch will make a blessing. And, and that may seem excessive, you know, like when people look at it, like, well, oh my gosh, you can't move without a blessing. And, but it, it, there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, it keeps good order. You don't have two priests saying the same line at the same time. But it also kind of models for us what prosef he means. Like, ideally, we're, we're, doing a, we're offering a prayer. We're asking for God's blessing through a prayer before every action that we're doing. <clears throat> um, now, if you want to go with the more secular analogy, <clears throat> um, in the football game, we jump from hierarchical liturgy to Super Bowl. <clears throat> in the football game, at, before every play, the quarterback goes into the huddle. They call a play. <clears throat> he goes up to the line. And if he's smart, and most of them are, before running the play, they look around at the defense and see where everything is. They evaluate their play. And sometimes they call an audible. Sometimes they change the play based on what they see. And so this discipline of, of stopping evaluating, um, I like to think that's what prayer is. Um, in a football game, they, they call about 75 plays on each side. And in our life, we probably call about 75 plays a day. And imagine if you stop for five seconds, 15 seconds before each decision you make, and said, Lord, I offer this up to you. Walk with me into this decision, you know, or I've made this decision. Help me execute it right. Um, I've got a difficult conversation. I've got to open up. Walk with me and allow me to do it with kindness. Um, putting every play you have under the umbrella of God. That's kind of what I think Prosef He is about, uh, what prayer is about. And, you know, a lot of people <clears throat> actually think that Prayer is like a vending machine. You like the, the vending machines you see at the, the auto dealership. You put in a dollar, you pull the lever you want, and the product you want comes out. And that's why people get discouraged. You know, like, well, how come I didn't, you know, name it and claim it? How come I didn't just, you know, God, I want this, amen, and how come it doesn't fall from the sky on my plate? Um, I prefer to look at, at prayer as like the, uh, the image of the vine and the branches. Jesus says in John 15, I'm the vine and you're the branches. So, and he talks about abiding, you know, the branches abide in the vine. If, if the branch is cut off from the vine, it's dead. It's, it has no nutrients. So I think that prayer is a lot like just abiding in God. 
It's not ordering things from God. It's not good karma. It's not like, let's do it because we'll just feel better. It's about putting your life under the umbrella of God and, and abiding in the vine and not being separate from it. All right. So that when I went to the vendor to, in the car show the other day and I pressed D3 and I wanted the Lay's potato chips, I got it right away. But mm -hmm. what you're saying is that's not the way things should happen. Absolutely. And there, and, and, there are, and there are people who like, they, they go to prayer, like the, the student prayer, like, Lord, I know I didn't study at all last night, but please you know, give me uncommon wisdom so I can pass the test. Help me, help me, Lord. Help so, me. And, then, and then it doesn't happen. They're like, okay, there is no God. And it's like, that, that's not how it works. You know, another thing I want to say on this subject is that, you know, for those of us who have plants or gardens or lawns like mine, um, you have to tend to them regularly. You can't, you know, if you have a if you have a potted plant in your house and you water it every day over the course of the year, let's say you put two gallons of water in that plant, just hypothetically, what happens, what would happen if you went on New Year's Day and you put two gallons of water on that plant and then you neglected it the rest of the year? I mean, the two gallons would overwhelm the plant sure. and then the plant would just be starved of water. And so this is why we need to be praying regularly. You can't say like, I'm doing all my prayer during Holy Week. I'm stocking up, you know, Holy Week and Christmas, and I'm not going to give it a second thought the rest of the year because that's like pouring two gallons of water on a plant on New Year's and neglecting it for the rest of the year. Sure. Okay. Um, I want to go to another question, but I'd like <clears throat> to offer our listeners and viewers the opportunity to put questions to you. So please uh, work with Noel, use the chat room. Uh, those of you on social media, of course, you can post those, and Noel has access to them, and then we can pose those to our guests. Uh, Father, you know, many people, I'm sure you know this, struggle with prayer. Uh, they just say, I'll just say the Lord's Prayer and that, that covers everything. How do we respond to that? Well, um, I read a book called 21 Seconds to Change Your Life. It got, the title got my, my attention. And so the, the thesis is that it was about the Lord's Prayer. And it says every time we offer the Lord's Prayer, it takes an average of 21 seconds to, to pray the Lord's Prayer. So there are people who say, like, Father, I pray the Lord's Prayer every day, you know, once. And I'm like, wow, so you're spending 21 seconds a day with God. I mean, that is not very much. So when we're only praying the Lord's Prayer once a day, we're not spending a lot of time. The second thing is that if you really internalize what's in the Lord's Prayer, it is um, almost like a hypocritical thing. We pray, you know, thy will be done, which is the, the hardest line to pray sincerely. We pray thy will be done. And if we really meant that, the Lord's prayer would be sufficient. But the way that most of us are thinking, it's like thy will be done as long as it doesn't conflict with my will. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so if you could pray the Lord's prayer and really pray everything in there, that is enough. But look at the Lord's prayer. You know, the first two words of the Lord's prayer, our father, are the two great commandments, love God and love neighbor. So using our father puts us in this vertical relationship that God is our father. Doing it with our puts us in the, in the horizontal relationship with our fellow man. Um, to say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. You know, if, if we're going to want God to overlook our sins in the same way we overlook the sins of others, I mean, my gosh, I hope he's more merciful than I am on, on other people. You know, be kind, and, and by extension, it's like, be as kind to me as I am to other people. Yeah. Uh, be as loving as I as you know as as I am to other people. You know, I would be a whole lot more careful if I really internalize that prayer. So, you know, I would say that if if a person learns to pray the Lord's prayer sincerely, um, that is enough. But most of us have been praying for years and we still don't have it down. The Thy will be done and forgive us as we forgive others. I'm still working on both of those. Well, Father, I have to tell you, uh, I'm going to reveal something about you, and I hope it's okay to do that. Uh, when I saw you, when you came up to the school when I was president, uh, you'd always pull me aside and you would say to me, can I pray with you? What are your needs? And I can't tell you how much that meant to me, that you actually took the time, rather than criticizing, rather than offering ideas, to say, what's in your heart? And I think that's what we're doing tonight. We're letting people know that it is okay to go to God. And 
I have to tell you, one of the greatest challenges of prayer, as I found, is being silent and being still in a world that seems like it's on sensory overload from media to internet to social media. I mean, how do we find time, Father, to be silent? You know, as they say, you, you find time for the things that are important. Uh, you know, I, I picked up my son at swim an hour ago and I said, we got to get home because daddy has an appointment at seven. So, you know, it's on the schedule. And so if we want to be with God, it's like we almost have to put it on a schedule. Otherwise, he gets forgotten. I'm so thankful that we have a liturgical calendar that tells me what days to celebrate the liturgy. I have liturgy Saturday and Sunday and Monday this weekend, and I have to be there. Um, if I said, well, let's, I'll wake up and I'll see how I feel, you know, maybe I would never go there. Um, <clears throat> at our summer camp, we schedule a time every day called Alone with God, and it's on the calendar, it's on the calendar every morning, 845. We spend 15 minutes alone with God, and I encourage people on your daily calendar, put 10 or 15 minutes alone with God, and that might be the first thing in the morning. If you're in a crazy house like mine, you know, with people, you know, moving, we got to get to school. I, I don't really, that, that doesn't really work for me here, so I set it at the office. We go to the office at 9 to 9.15, let's say, is alone with God time. Um, but if you don't, if you don't take the time, if you don't put it in the schedule, like, you're not going to do it. Um, there's a, I heard a priest give a, a, a podcast on prayer one time and, and he, and he kind of joked, but not really about what happens when you only pray at night, when the whole day goes by and, and you don't pray and people are like, well, I pray when I go to bed. And he said, you know, the prayer when you go to bed sounds something like this, Lord, you know that I love you. I'm tired. I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> and, and so that's why you don't want to wait and leave the alone with God time as you're falling asleep because it'll be really, really quick, and you won't be really focused. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we need to be silent in order to hear God's voice. I mean, we, we, when your head is filled with music and noise and loud things, it's really hard to concentrate and hear anything, hear your own thoughts. Um, one of my favorite images from a book is, is uh, the book Beginning to Pray by, by Anthony Bloom, Metropolitan Anthony Bloom. Some of you have heard that. It's in the introduction, I think. He talks about sitting in a room with a candle uh, and saying, I'm going to commit 10 minutes a day. I'm going to, I'm going to turn all the lights out. I'm going to put a candle in front of the icon of Christ. And I'm just going to sit here. And, you know, the, the thought that has always come to my mind when I read that is, you know, for the person who's never prayed or who doesn't really, isn't really sure what prayer is. If you took 10 minutes a day and you said, I'm going to commit to just sitting quietly and doing nothing for 10 minutes a day for 30 days, at some point in the 30 days, staring at this icon with your candle burning, <clears throat> Curiosity will get the best of you and you'll open your mouth and you'll say something to God. And then that's where the dialogue begins. Um, now, five minutes goes by really fast when you're surfing the internet or watching TV. Um, and so I tell people, it, but it goes by really slow when you're praying. You can cover a lot of ground in five minutes. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I have, have, do occasionally when I'm struggling to focus on prayer is take the phone set an alarm for 10 minutes, at, you know, from now and put on the other side of the room where you're not going to look at it and then just sit quietly, sit, sit quietly, read the Bible, pray. The alarm will tell you when 10 minutes is over and then you go get the phone and go about your day. Um, and you find that, that 10 minutes really is nothing, but in the, in the context of prayer, you can get a lot done in 10 minutes. Okay. Um, I want to uh, offer you the opportunity folks to, pose any questions to Father. And you know, also we have Father Grigori and we have uh, Theofani from Albania on the line too. They are our missionaries. And uh, if you have any questions, please post them at the end of the program. If we have time, we're gonna jump in and try to answer those. So I know that we have the chat through Zoom and of course we have our uh, social media pages as well. Um, Father, I don't know about you, but there just seems to be a lot of do's and don'ts associated with prayer. Like, do I use a prayer book? Do I pray from the heart? How long do I pray? When do I pray? Can you talk about some of the, the common questions that people have about prayer and possibly those answers? <clears throat> Absolutely. The, this question is probably the one that comes up the most regarding prayer. Just how and when and how long and what words. And you probably there are probably as many answers as there are people who answer them. Um, 
I know that some priests and monks give their spiritual children like a prayer rule, like do this many prayers in a day and do these specific ones at certain times. And I remember I asked my spiritual father, you know, are you going to give me a rule of prayer? Like, what do I do? And he said, the rule of prayer is to pray. Don't let 24 hours go by without praying. And but that wasn't all that he did. He didn't say, you know, he didn't say that and then just leave me to my own devices. Um, so what, so over the years, I, I have to change my prayer routine so that it doesn't get stale uh, and rote. So one of the things that I do is I mix up a combination of praying from a book or I don't pray from the book. I've memorized a lot of the prayers from the book, but to pray, you know, set prayers like the heavenly King comforter versus my own words. And sometimes I use the, the already provided words just to get my brain going. Um, and then I may go to my own words. And so, so what do you, what do you mean when you say like, you know, what, what are my own words? Um, <clears throat> this is something really important. There are two things that I'm going to say that, that I think will be, I hope will be really helpful. Um, the first is that if you're going to pray and you're not sure what to say, start with the context where you find yourself, start in the context where you find yourself. So if I was going to pray right now, the, the, I'm in the context of I'm talking to a bunch of people on my computer screen. So the first thing I would, would probably say is thank you, God, that I'm alive to be having this conversation. <laughs> thank you, God, for the technology that I have that allows me to communicate with people across the world in this forum. Then I'm going to I'm going to look at the people on the screen and I'm going to say, what are the things that I have in common with these people? Um <clears throat> Everybody is, is probably got questions about their faith. Everyone's probably got some anxiety about the way the world is. Everyone's probably stressed out because it's December and we're, we're trying to touch all the bases. So I would say, you know, Lord, watch over our, our uh, anxiety. Help us to touch all the bases this month. Keep us all safe as we come to Christmas. Help us have a meaningful time together uh, and a meaningful journey to, to Bethlehem. And I would start again on where we are. You know, Father Chris said, you know, I, I, I prayed with him when I would visit. I do that. Anyone that comes to my office, I pray with them. And it's easy because it's like the context where we are. When I prayed in his office, like, you know, he's away from his family. He's trying to lead this school. He's trying to prepare a priest. I mean, there's all kinds of things that I could say for him. And when I run out of things to say for him, then I can start talking about the other priests. There are other priests all across this country who are trying to do the same thing. So be with them. And they're, they've got family struggles. There's all kinds of guys at the school just like there's all kinds of people on this screen that there are people that are married, people with kids, people who are struggling, people who are, who've lost work, people who are just started a new job. We can pray for all kinds of things, but we start with the context where we are and we build from there. Um, the other thing that I've told people, like basically my, like my youth groups, I give them a rule of prayer that's four numbers and they can remember the numbers. So the numbers are five, five, five and one. So, and our kids like do crafts like this. They make the numbers and they put them on the refrigerator because my kid had them for years up there. So the five, the first five is five things for which I'm thankful. So if you wake up in the morning, you say like, thank you, God, I'm alive. Thank you, God, for my spouse. Thank you for my kids. Thank you for the roof over my head, the food in my fridge. And thank you that I've got a place to go today. So five things for which you're thankful. The second five is five people I want to pray for. Now, you don't have to limit it to five. You can make many people. So I'm going to pray for my spouse, my kid, my parent. I'm going to pray for my coworker, my neighbor, my friend. I'm going to pray for Yanni and Susie and Michael and the people by name. And if I run out of those people, then I can start praying in general. Like, Lord, remember the first responders, the firefighters, the police officers, the military, uh, the people that are traveling today, people who are in hospitals. There's all kinds of generalities. So that's the second five, five things I'm thankful for and five people I want to pray for. The next five is five things that I need today with an emphasis on today, right? I don't look at past today. The Bible, Jesus says in the Bible, sufficient for today is its own needs, its own problems. Yes. So what do I need today? On every, any, every day I'm in the car. So I need safety and travels. Um, I need efficiency because I got a lot of tasks to do. I need wisdom because I make a lot of decisions. I need patience because I just need patience and I want to have fun today. I want to smile every day. So I say, you know, Lord, give me patience today. Give me efficiency. Give me wisdom. Give me safety and give me an opportunity to laugh. Um, 
And those are five things that I need today. I don't need my kid to graduate from college. That's not happening today. I'm not worried about my retirement today. I'm not there. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do on Sunday for the sermon yet, but today is Thursday, so I don't have to worry about that right yet. Um, so the things I need today are those, those five, which brings me now to the one. The one is, Lord, give me an opportunity to serve somebody today. Put a person in my path that I can help. And, and that's the, the, the most fun part of the prayer because God answers that prayer every day in a different way. I never know what he's going to do. So there was one day where I, where I hadn't talked to anyone all day. I spent, I was all day. I had no appointments. I was in the office writing all day. And I said, well, I, I, I didn't cross paths with anybody. So I was on the way home. I uh, stopped at the gas station. It's like nine o'clock at night. And this guy comes up to me and he goes, are you a pastor? And I said, what gave it away? My collar? Um, and he said, you know, I just lost my job and I'm trying, and I'm on the way home and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to tell my wife that I don't have a job. And, uh, so I'm sitting on the hood of my car at nine o'clock praying with this stranger. And then, you know, we finished that up and I said, thank you, God, you answered my prayer. You, it was nine o'clock at night, but the day didn't pass without me doing something for someone in this case, a total stranger. And some days that might be my own family and it might be a close friend. It might be a parishioner or it might be a complete stranger. So five, 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 one, um, really is, um, something that has helped me and helped other people. And when I, when I'm getting lazy, I go back to that. That's like the, the easiest kind of prayer. It takes you three minutes to do that. Um, as, as far as the debate of book and, and from the heart, I, I mix them both. Okay. Well, we always look, and Noel is, uh, I'm sure, antenna are going up right now. We always look for so-called refrigerator moments uh, during our broadcasts. And uh, clearly the 5551 is something that we should do. We should print it out. We should, I don't know, bold it, color it, do whatever you want with it. But put it somewhere that will remind us that these are things. I mean, you talked about being grateful. You need today. Uh, people you want to pray for, and then give us an opportunity, Lord. I mean, it's very simple, people. It's very, very simple. That, that's a very simple equation for success in prayer. I don't talk about success elsewhere. I'm talking about being one with God, being in the image and likeness of God. This will really help us. Father, there's so much information. Um, I've got a couple more questions that I want to pose, and Again, I want to encourage those of you that want to ask questions uh, to please post them either in the chat room or uh, in social media. Uh, Father, we hear a lot about prayer and worship, prayer and scripture, almost as if they are separate entities. I mean, can you kind of unpack that for us? Sure. Um, so worship is corporate prayer. And so I think there's like, there's three kinds of prayer. There's private prayer. Mm -hmm. There's corporate prayer. Actually, I, I would say, I guess there's four categories. There's private prayer. There's corporate prayer informally, which is what, we're, what we did today. We're here, there's no service, but there's lots of people. And then we offered a prayer. Then there's formal corporate prayer, which is worship. And in our church, we've got a formal structure for how to worship. And then there's scripture reading. So we should be engaging in private prayer and scripture reading on a daily basis. Prayer is where we open up our hearts to God and scripture reading is how we hear God talking to us. And then we have occasions like this where we offer a prayer in a, in a corporate context. There's more than one person here. And that might be you know, praying at your dinner table or praying with a coworker or praying at a Bible study. And then of course there's the worship with the, with the big corporate worship. Um, and we need to have all of them. We need to have all of them. There are people who are like, well, I go to worship on Sunday, and that kind of takes care of everything. Yes. Yeah, really I don't have to do anything. Um, and, and, you know, the, the response to that is, uh, you know, if you got, if you guys, you know, proposed to your wife and said, you know, will you marry me? I'll give you a good 45 minutes a week, you know, as long as I make it and I'm not busy. I mean, who would accept a, who would make a proposal like that? And ladies who are married, I mean, who would accept a proposal like that? I'll give you 45 minutes on most weeks, unless, you know, there's a golf game or something. Um, so, you know, we can't, a relationship, you're not going to make it like that in a marriage with a child. 
uh, you know, the good relationships we have there, there are daily. Now there are days where I spend the whole day with the family and days I spend minimal time with family, but you know, you don't spend no time. Um, or if I'm traveling and I actually spend no time, then when I come back, I spend more time. Um, so we have to, you know, prayer is a, is a daily check with God and scripture is the same thing. We should spend some time reading scripture. Lots of people don't know how to read scripture. I tell people, you know, if you've never read the Bible, read the Gospels two or three times, read Acts, read the Epistles, and then wade into the Old Testament. But you don't have to read a lot. And I'm not saying that to be lazy. Um, I tell people, like, sit with Scripture, read a passage, and then just sit with it. Sit and stare at it and let it, like, percolate into your head. If I asked everybody to write down, what are we doing right at this minute? Some people would say, I'm listening. Some people would say, he's rambling. Some people will say, I love the view out of Father Chris's window. Everyone would write something different. Um, and nobody would be wrong. I mean, we're all experiencing the same thing, but we're all experiencing it a little different. So if you read a passage of scripture, like, and Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. And I said, just think about that. Write those words on a piece of paper, love your neighbor as yourself. Take five minutes, everybody write a paragraph of whatever comes to your mind. You know, someone might say, like, I really dislike the person I live next to. You know, someone might say, um, I need to go and, and make a nice gesture toward my neighbor. I haven't said hi to them in a long time. Somebody would say, I love the color of my neighbor's house. Um, we all have something. And so, you know, sitting with scripture is, is looking at a small passage of scripture and, and praying over it, staring at it, letting it seep into your head, and then letting God speak to you through, you know, his way. If you want to read, like, the best book, much better than any book I could read, write, is sit with scripture with a journal and write down the thoughts that God brings to your mind. And you'll have the best book because it'll be the book that God wrote for you. It'll be the thoughts that he brought to your head while you were reading his word, and you'd have the best book in the world. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's that's right there. You come up with your own journal. Wow. Now, now back to, to worship. A lot of people don't understand worship. They think that worship is like a play. The priest gets up there and he does his thing, and the chanters and the altar boys and the choir. And it's this nice thing, except that it's the same thing every week. And then we're like, well, if I miss a week, I mean, no big deal. It'll be the same thing next week. Yeah. So I have learned, and a priest taught me this actually, that worship is a guided prayer that touches all the things that you could touch in life when the priest does the petitions as an example he is not really praying he's prompting and the people are praying so the priest is giving like a guided tour of everything in the world did you pray for the president this week I mean, most of us haven't so now we're going to pray for the president and we all say lord have mercy on the president have you prayed for good weather this week most of us probably haven't. So the priest is now we're praying for good weather, temperate seasons, for peaceful times. Pray for that. And all the people say, Lord, have mercy. And people don't really, really realize that the, the prayer is the people's response. The priest is just leading you on this guided tour. Have you thought about dying this week, your own death? I mean, because there's a petition for it in the liturgy, for Christian end to your life, peaceful, without shame and suffering. Priest reminds you every liturgy, think about your death. It's going to happen one of the, in sometime in the next hundred years. And, and the response is, oh, grant this, oh, Lord, when it's my time, grant me what he just said. And, and imagine if the priest did all the petitions and there were no responses. He would just be going down a checklist with no one reacting to it. The prayer really is the people praying the responses. And the priest is just given the prompts. So, wor so worship is like this guided prayer through the whole world. And when the liturgy is over, you will have prayed for everything there is to pray for, especially like when the priest says, uh, and remember all those that each of us is calling prayerfully to mind. If, if, if there's something I miss, I mean, we've got the country, the president, the military, the first responders, the sick, the suffering. And in case that didn't cover everything you can think of, remember those that you're calling to mind and the people call them to mind and say, yes, Lord, all the people, all the people I'm calling to mind. Yeah. There's just this beautiful, complete, amazing prayer. Oh, Father, you're, you are filled tonight with the Holy Spirit and sharing things that are just magnificent. I mean, can you imagine, folks, what would happen if we went to church each Sunday or each weekday liturgy? I mean, this week we have St. Barbara. 
we have St. Nicholas, and we have so many coming up. <laughs> Imagine if we went to church and did that, that listened to that planned guideline. I mean, that's a whole different perspective that, frankly, I, I haven't heard before, Father. I think that's- I, I heard it like, I heard it three years ago from Father Stephen Matthews, I give credit, in oh, Tennessee, yeah. and I, I changed my whole perspective on the liturgy. It's like, you realize you're just guiding the people through a long prayer. They're doing the praying. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, uh, talk about prayer. St. Paul tells us to pray without ceasing. I mean, how do we cultivate a life of prayer like that? Does that mean we just can't do anything outside of prayer? Well, you know, that's interesting. Someone asked me, what are the things that you do without ceasing? What are name some things that you do every day? Um, I said, well, I eat, I work, <laughs> I sleep. You know, there's not a day goes by that I don't eat or that I don't sleep or that I don't work. So I'm doing those things without ceasing, but I'm not necessarily doing those things every moment of every day. Um, so one way to look at prayer is, you know, the, the way that we are, uh, it's part of our identity. Like I'm always married, whether I'm at work and she's not there, or I'm at home and she's here. I mean, I'm always married. I've never ceased being married. Now there are times where I'm, where I feel more married because I'm interacting with my spouse. And maybe there's times where, uh, I'm away for the whole day at the office, but I mean, I'm still married. Um, I'm still a father. I'm, I'm always in that state. And then I'm coming back to those things constantly checking in because they're part of my identity. So being a person of prayer means that I am, I am constantly making a connection with God. I may take a few hours off because I'm watching a movie or I'm, I'm counseling somebody or I'm mowing the lawn. I mean, I'd be actually actively saying the words of prayer, but I am praying constantly um, throughout my day and throughout my life. Um, prayer is a connection. And the more we pray, the more connected we are with God. Now, when we sin, we're, we're not connected. So here's, a, here's another analogy. Um, if I hold a piece of yarn between me and you, and we give a gentle tug on the yarn, the yarn's going to break. It's not very strong. If we put 100 pieces of yarn in between us, and we pull on them, we're not going to break them. If we cut 10 of those pieces and we only have 90, um, we are still not going to break them. But you don't want to give one piece and cut it and one piece and cut it. That, that's not going to work. Um, so prayer is like making the connection. If I, if I offer 75 short prayers a day, um, you know, that's 75 connections with God. And if I make, you know, 20 sins in a day, that is... 20 times I sever the connection, but I'm still building the connection because I'm praying more than I'm sinning. And the more that I pray, probably the less I'm going to sin. So prayer, prayer just strengthens the connection with God. It doesn't preclude us from having fun though. You know, being a person of prayer does not mean, you know, I can never laugh or smile. Um, I don't have to well, carry like, a long face or whatever. Our life is prayer too, right? Our interactions with our family, with our friends, with our coworkers, uh, that's a prayer as well. Many Absolutely. Times, many times we're there and offering just our presence is, is a real viable prayer to people. Father, we're coming towards the end of the program. Uh, we've got two questions that have come up and I've got one more to ask you. So okay. let's go to our guests and see uh, what we have here. Noel, let me go back to you. Okay, so the first question is from YouTube. It's kind of a back to basics question uh, from a Protestant who converted to Orthodoxy. So an Orthodox Christian who's only Protestant, um, who said that they really enjoy now being able to pray to the mother of God and the saints. They enjoy that being part of their prayer life now, but they want some clarification on the, is, there, is that type of prayer sort of fundamentally different from prayer to God? Um, good question. And a lot of people don't understand what we're doing with the saints. I pray, I, I call it praying through the saints. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> like for instance, if I'm, if I'm having uh, surgery tomorrow and I say, Lord, keep me safe through the surgery and father Chris, please ask the Lord to keep me safe through the surgery. And Noel, please ask God to keep me safe through the surgery. And St. Nicholas and Panagia and the angels, please keep me, ask God to keep me safe from the surgery. You know, the, the prayer goes to the Lord. All those prayers go to the Lord. But all these people I'm asking to intercede, I'm asking them to pile their prayers on top of my prayer to go to the Lord. All the prayer goes to the Lord. I mean, I never say, 
St. Nicholas saved me. But I may say, St. Nicholas put a good word into Christ for me, for my salvation. That's why we pray through the intercessions of all these saints. So like today I was at the hospital visiting someone who's sick in my parish. And at the end of the prayer, I said, through the intercessions of, and I named all the healing saints. Yeah. St. Dario, St. Cosmas, St. Damien, St. Pan the Layman, St. Paraskevi, St. Luke the Physician, and the Panagi, and all the saints. <clears throat> um, you know, I, but the prayer was to the Lord. But I enjoyed invoking the name of those saints, and I'm and I'm so glad that I have the, the I know the categories of the saints, so that when it's a sick person, it's this, when it's a traveling person, it's St. Nicholas is for the travelers, and when it's, you know, for the lawyers, it's St. Okay. Luke, etc. All right, let's go to the second question. So the second question is here in the chat from Elsie. Is meditating on the passages we're reading from the Bible and relating them to our own lives considered praying, even though we are not really asking for specific things? Yes, absolutely. Because prayer is like the, like the vine and the branches. It's abiding in God. It's being with God. It's being present with God. Um, if, if uh, like, like at the beginning of this podcast, when Father Chris offered the prayer, I mean, he was saying the words, no one was saying the words, but we were all in prayer at that moment because one person is, is praying and all of us are abiding in the prayer. None of us said, all right, you come, you pray and I'll come back in a minute. I'm going to go get something out of the microwave. We were present when prayer was being offered, you know, and so if you're, if you're reading the Bible, if you're worshiping, if you're in the presence of someone else who's praying, or you're just being with someone in an act of love and kindness, I mean, then you're praying. Okay. Father, I'm going to try to tie things up. One of the most beautiful prayers that I, I just can't wait to say is the prayer of thanksgiving after the receiving of Holy Communion. And I would offer that as a, really a definite prayer that you can say. Uh, I have a, an opportunity there to go around the back of the altar and just stand there and read that prayer. It is so filled with a connection to God. Father, I have one final question. We have to do it quickly. How do you deal... <laughs> How, what do you do when God just doesn't answer prayers? You know, that's one of the things that turns people off to praying. Like I pray and I pray and I pray. And he never says yes. He never does what I ask. Um, and I have to say that, you know, the simple answer is I keep showing up. I mean, God has disappointed me in prayer many times. There are things I've prayed for that never, never seem to go right. Um, and I am determined and committed. Like I'm going to keep showing up to be in your presence, you know, and I go to things like Isaiah 55, where, where God says, my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are, are not your thoughts. Um, there's a passage in Acts 6, where the disciples say to the Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Because they think now that the crucifixion and resurrection have happened, that political freedom is right around the corner. And he says, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father is fixed by his own authority. Um you know, there is the, the blind man in uh, John 9, where, where the disciples say, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born this way. Uh, and, and Jesus says, it's not that the man sinned or the parents, but that the works of God might be manifest in him. So there are lots of times in the Bible, the Canaanite woman who kept asking for, for her daughter to be healed, and, and Jesus sort of rebuffs her. Um, you know, in all these instances, God's greatness can can happen his thoughts are not our thoughts his seasons are not our seasons and so i just keep showing up um i heard something interesting the other day someone said if if you were told you can have a a, a lifetime of blessings for 0. 0.3 seconds of immense pain would you do it and uh most people would be like yeah absolutely 0. 0.3 seconds is like nothing to do this and have a life of of, of awesomeness who wouldn't do that? And he said, well, in the span of eternity, our life is like this. And so, you know, if your life is unanswered prayers, but you've shown up for the 0. 0.3 seconds of eternity, you're going to have the rest of eternal life be, be blessed and glorious. So when, when God doesn't answer prayer, and there, there are certain things, there are certain questions I have for God, you know, like if, if I'm having surgery tomorrow and, and Father Chris is having surgery tomorrow, and everyone prays for Father Chris and no one prays for me. Did we get a different outcome? Uh, 
do I, what if, what if he just knows more people than I do? Does that, does that make his prayer worth more? And these are questions. I don't have the answers for these. I, I have a couple questions I want to ask God when I, when I meet him. Uh, and that's one of them. But what I do know is that uh, I just keep showing up for him. All because right. prayer is not, you know, the vending machine. The prayer is just to be with him. Father Stavros, always an honor and a privilege to have you with us. Uh, Theofani and Father Grigor from Albania, it was an honor to have you here with us today. I'm sure other missionaries will be with us as well. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll say a closing prayer and then Noel and I will make just some uh, closing uh, announcements about things that are coming up at OCN. And uh, you can stay on for a few minutes afterwards if you choose to say hi to those folks that are on the screen. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Amen. Noel, we're back to you. I know you're cooking some stuff up there. What's going on? I know we've got some new things coming too. Yes. So uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can find all of our upcoming programs. Um, Many of them are published now on the website and the rest will be up very soon. Um, Our third issue of the digital magazine, Orthodoxy Now, is in the process of being completed and that will be published soon in its digital format. So keep an eye out for that. Of course, we have our weekly children's resource, the printable children's word, daily articles, um, audio, and all the other resources that are on our website, myocn.net, as well as our community calendar. So upcoming programs, we have um, on Every Sunday, uh, including this Sunday, we have 11.30 to 12.30 on our YouTube channel, Adult Education with Michael Haldas. Those are all recorded on our YouTube channel. So if you miss them, you can always find the past editions of that program. On Tuesday, we have our Armed with Faith program at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Father Gary Kiriakou. This week, we'll be talking about how young people can understand God's will in their lives. And we'll also be talking with a student who is Orthodox at a Protestant college about his experiences there, how he's navigated that, his identity in that environment and um, just that different faith experience. So if you uh, are a young person, know a young person, educators, um, youth workers, or anyone that just wants to join in a conversation about uh, young people's understanding of these issues and topics, we encourage you to join and invite others. Uh, On Wednesday next week, we have a special program for the holidays. We have our Greek Girls Kitchen Girls, that's Chef Sophia and Chef Melina, they will be baking or cooking two recipes uh, for us for the holidays. That will be at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live on our Facebook. And if you can't join us then, we will also upload it. It'll be saved on our Facebook and we'll also upload it to YouTube after the program is complete. But it'll be a live cooking demonstration. If you can join us live on Facebook, Uh, you'll be able to ask your questions throughout the broadcast. And if you go to our Facebook page, you'll be able to find that event there in RSVP. So definitely check that out. And then- Does that mean we have a program every single day online now? uh, For, so that is a one-time, the Wednesday is a one-time thing. So not quite every day, but we do still have our every other Wednesday program Living so Father John Blahos, so many of our Wednesdays are covered. We're getting there. And we have uh, three new programs that are going to be coming out of the Ascension Cathedral yes. in Oakland, California. Uh, they are Bible studies, and uh, that will be coming very soon with Father Tom Zephyrus de Pristamaro and uh, Father Nick Mueller, who is the associate pastor there. Uh, please watch out for that. Uh, those will be very impactful. Both, both men are tremendous orators, and they'll be able to share a lot with you. I'm happy to tell you that the movie, The Man of God, uh, is coming to the United States of America. It will be in major theaters, and OCN will be one of the major promoters of that. And so please watch out, because we'll be putting out information uh, very, very soon about it. Uh, Thank you to all of you who gave, especially during uh, Giving Tuesday. It was amazing. Every time I turned around, we got another email. We got another email. We got another email. Uh, We had donations from... $10 a month to donations of as high as a thousand. And uh, that's great because it shows that people believe in what we're doing. Uh, And you know that that money is used, every dime of it is used to spread the message of Christ. 
And I can't say it enough. You folks are the wind and the wings of the angels carrying the message of Christ to the world. Thanks for your support. God bless you. A blessed nativity to everyone. And those of you celebrating your feast days this coming week, we wish you the very best. Good night and God bless.